Um, I, I've got a tough job because they asked me to do two presentations in 30 minutes. So, but what I'm going to start with, um, Rich, Rich mentioned I chaired some economic development task forces, and I chaired one for Chairman Eves and also one for um, Commissioner Arrington. And what we did last year, is this clear in the back? Is it, like, okay. What we did last year through the Camping Business Association, we created both a, a retail survey and an economic development survey for both Cascade Commercial Corridor and Camp Creek. And I sent those out and distributed them. We had roughly 350 respondents. And it was a good pulsing and sampling of what, what do people think. What I wanted to do was take a few minutes and share the feedback from that. Because this looks fuzzy, that's better. Yes. Fuzzy to me. But I wanted to kind of go through that. I, really haven't, I haven't published the results yet. So really quick, quickly, I'm going to go through the survey and the findings, the key takeaways, and what I think are collaborations that all of the all of the business association for South Fulton can do, and in terms of partnering with development and also working with um, the different municipalities. First, uh, I'm not going to put the survey questions up. There are a dozen survey questions, but I thought it's more important to show you the areas of which I broke the survey down. So I broke it down in really four areas. One in blue, perception and brand. As, as, as both Doug and John know, perception and brand identity are important for image and marketing and the ability to bring retailers in and also for entrepreneurs in. And it's very important, I thought, to understand the individual perception of the residents and, and people that shop here, but also the businesses and people outside the area and look at those in comparison. Second, we wanted to look at shopping trends. Do people believe that the quality of services and shopping is going up, it's the same, or going down, and then, what is the wish list? Everyone always has wish lists of things they want. Sometimes they're realistic, sometimes they're attainable, sometimes they're not. And then lastly, this is tough to read with the color here, this is more about economic development. Are there issues that are impediments to development? Are there issues in terms of lack of leadership or engagement from a county level? Are there issues from an environmental level? What is going on that might prevent economic development and shopping from happening? So, looking at the feedback we received, first and foremost, you know, there was a wide variety of opinions that you would suspect about that. I think the, the biggest issue that we had was there wasn't a great deal of comfort and satisfaction for what the current state of this shopping corridor is versus what people aspirationally want it to be. There were concerns about the perception of crime, whether it's actual or not. And there's also real strong concerns about cleanliness. Cleanliness came up through this all the time. We all know we have code enforcement issues and working with an area that's split between two areas, between Fulton and Atlanta, you obviously may have different levels of synchronicity in terms of how they work. But these were the two most important things and what we found through the data was the issues of public safety and crime and the issues of cleanliness code enforcement, and most importantly, a lack of consistent and quality service really influenced the perception of what this brand is. So overall, from the respondents that we received, people weren't happy to say this, this area is in decline pretty much because of these issues. And what's interesting also is, is that people looked at it in two ways. One, we could be doing more residents and shoppers. The county could be doing more as well as the merchants been doing more. So we looked at very holistically that we have a part of this because the trash that's there, people drive by and see it. The shoppers that may come in from outside leave it. But it was interesting to see, which you don't see in many surveys like this, there was a shared sense of responsibility, but everyone pretty much agreed that the area was in decline. The thing that surprised me, and I think, I think it surprised Rich, was when we mentioned the Cascade Commercial Corridor, there were survey respondents that branded this as being all the way from the West End, Adamsville. And I attribute that to being there really isn't a brand identity for this 1.4 mile stretch of commercial business that separates it. And some people even confused it with parts of Camp Creek and Old National in the respondent survey. So the other thing that's a challenge, which I think feeds into some of the perceptions about public crime and safety and cleanliness, is that people view this area as being this amorphous area of southwest Atlanta or SWATs, as opposed to this is an area that runs just inside 285 and just outside Danforth Road. And that actually surprised me. I don't know if that surprises you guys at all. That as long as this area's been developed for 20, 25 years, there's still responders that view this as being part of what's at the West End. The other part is there was criticality 
of the variety and quality of, of services here. So there, there were people that wanted services and stores which are really big box locations which aren't, which can't fit out here because of development. But they wanted the kind of things that they would see in Furman Mall, the kind of things you see in Atlantic Station, the kind of things you see in Bucket, but they wanted it in what's really a small commercial meadow. So that's where the, the criticality came from. So there was more desire for, I'll talk about the next slide, entertainment, bookstores, a wide variety, but again, this is just a small commercial node, and I think that there's a belief that even though we have commercial products and services here and stores, we have Publix and Walmart and Home Depot, this is viewed in the same class that you have a Camp Creek Marketplace, which is a much larger area. You can have three to 500,000 plants develop, and there's really a lack of understanding that you know, you can't compare what we have here, which is a really a small neighborhood commercial district, to something that you have in dozens and dozens of miles in Buckhead or Atlantic Station, which was really predefined and at one point. And that really, I think, feeds into a lot of the concerns about where we have. So aspirationally, people view this because of you, you, it's a nice area as being we should have the types of services and products and stores of size and national that we have in Buckhead, but you can't fit all of that in this small area. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. And then going over to uh, the retail choices and economic development, here's some of the things that we wanted. As we, as we go through this, I mean, these are really nice ideas, but based on what's not developed yet, which are very small tracks, or we've got tracks here, I guess, by the, by the driving range, other than that, most of the property that's out here has been developed. You desire for entertainment, jazz in the park near the gazebo, that's really a tough fit on that small shoehorn area, but that was a key thing. And then you've got the, what I call the big box type ideas, a David Buster, the main event, the Top Golf. I mean, you know, the Top Golf is now on the west side in, in Midtown. That's a very large out parcel. Doug, how big is that? It's huge. Uh, it's about 12 acres. I think. Yeah. So, <coughs> So these are great ideas, but the thing to take away from this, and, and I'm all, as president of the Camp Your Business Association, I'm working with their Atropolis CID. These are the types of things we're trying to pull down to the Camp Creek area, where we have those large swaths of property. So why people, we want those. Those will be five to 10 minutes away because there's large areas down there with the CID that we have that we've got the ability to better recruit um, those. And then there's the Barnes and Noble and bookstores. And just one point about bookstores and Barnes and Noble, because having been a merchant down there for a long time, I've gotten this a lot. Is that you know the Barnes and Noble that closed there essentially was making the same revenue it made 10 years before. And Amazon really has killed the book business, essentially. The same year that they closed that store, they filed bankruptcy, the CEO was fired. And the, the, the amount of money they were making per square foot at that location just was not tenable for a 40,000 square foot place where they had to pay a 10 year lease. So that was a business decision and you can see now where bookstores are. What we should look to do is look for these smaller independent bookstores because the way bookstores make money now is through having live signings and authors. So while this is a good idea, we still have a few Barnes and Nobles left, that's not coming back to Camp Creek and we're looking at the smaller independent ones that are more, that are more tenable. This is obviously something you can do because this is more of a traditional retail space. And then, you know, and this I've already touched on this, you know, in terms of the belief, but you know, some of the people here can attest to this, we just don't have the parcels here to develop it. So what we have to focus on for Cascade is how do we work on the brand, the imaging, the perceptions of crime that are that are real, and the, the service levels and the uh, and the litter. Because these are the brand things that attract people to the community, they improve the image. And it makes it easier to bring in national and regional retailers because it looks like it's an area that's on the upswing. And then the last piece that was talked about, which I think we all know from all the news, we, we've, got a, we've got a schism here to split. How do we bring together Fulton and City of Atlanta so we've got, for all the ways they provide services from code, from transportation, that not only is there a shared vision, there's also similar types of ordinances I, ha I have four jurisdictions at Camp Creek. I've got College Park, East Point, Unincorporated Atlanta, and there's so many areas that don't match. And, and as this gentleman knows, the police forces work together, but they do have different rules. Um, this, is, this is a huge issue, and however this turns out over the next six months, 
we'll then focus on that. But that it was good to see that the people who responded saw that as being an important issue. So some takeaways that I saw from this, and I'll just do a couple. Um, one is fix the broken window. For those that aren't familiar, it's, it's a metaphor, and it came out of a 1982 study of North Crime, but it talks about when you first have a broken window or something there, you immediately fix it. You focus on the small things, because a small thing, you have one broken window, all of a sudden you have more broken windows, you have trash, you have things like that, and, then, and having that in your community starts to go to perception. And once you have perception that the area is not cared for, you have crime, but more importantly, the people that shop there start to have, change the image and belief they had about it. We need to figure out in the area that I live out here, how do we as merchants, as associations, developing community, and the county work to have code enforcement work better? How do we as citizens make this better so that we have an area that looks like it's cared for? And we don't have, for instance, you know, cascade road signs and we're, which have no paint on them because that immediately sends a message to people coming in that Doug or John may be breaking in. It looks like the area's not cared for from a county perspective. Second takeaway, we need to have an identity for this area. If people think this is the West End, which is strange to me, or you think it's actually Adamsville, we need to have some way to uniquely brand this and brand it as something special. And by branding, I mean it's different than just posting a sign that says, welcome to Southwest Fulton County. That's not part of it. Part of it has care and feeding. Part of it is having uh, care for median and things like that. Part of it's having all the things looking like has curb appeal. When we all have sold our houses. We know we do make our houses look nice. We edge the gutter, we clean paint stuff. We need to have that brand identity to make it feel like it's special. So as an example of that, what the CID is doing where I am with the DDI project we have at Camp Creek, they're gonna spend a million dollars to create monuments and landscape architecture to make it the most dramatic DDI like permanent uh, acres mill in the city. So when you come to Camp Creek now and you pass that, which starts in 2018, you'll know you've arrived somewhere. That's the imaging we need to go to. I think one of the ways to do this is to look at making this a business improvement district with obviously the, the uh, sign off on the business owners, obviously, more than a CID because with the challenges we have with the split city and municipality, they're not going to have the resources or this quick vision to do what they need to do to provide the right level of service. And much like we're seeing big benefits with the Atropolis CID of, of the having this, the self-taxing, and the CID where I am focuses on three things, which we talked about. Public safety, cleanliness, stuff like that, and transportation. These are the three issues you talked about. Um, that's, that's a concept. To me, this is more of a BID than a CID because it's so small. But that was one thought I had because I don't see where without some sort of self-forming of, of that happening here, we're ever going to have the kind of things we need to lift this area and do the care and feeding we need. And then lastly, this is kind of obvious, we need to have a holistic view of transportation. So if, if you drive on Sunday and you drive like Fairburn Road, the Chick-fil-A is going to be, you may be stuck for 30 minutes trying to go down Fairburn Road. If you travel in the morning, you can't get out because you can't get on the highway. And you've got the DOT here, we've got the city here, we've got the county. We need to have a holistic view of this. And it's a shame with the proposed EDI project, that's off the list. But the bigger challenge we've got is not under